Brett White, I'm a graphic artist and exhibition artist, and I was asked by Bomber Command Association to flesh out their new cabinets here in the Bomber Command area. Um, and I've been working with them to work out what memorabilia goes in and how to flesh out the stories with photographs and little bits of text and things that, that bring to life what the Bomber Command guys got up to because there's uh, an awful lot of stories to tell and a lot of them were just never told until recently. And of course you've got a personal connection to Bomber Command, haven't you? Oh, I have, um, and a personal connection to MOTAT, although this is the first time I've done anything with them. Uh, my father, Tom White, was a rear gunner on a Lancaster on 101 squadron, and uh, when MOTAT opened, he donated his number one blues uniform to MOTAT for display here, and as a child I used to come and see it here. And he uh, went on to become one of the Wednesday Bomber Boys working on the Lancaster, and uh, he's done a lot of display work in his time, so he painted the diorama behind 101 Squadron's little model outfit in the window right next to us here, and so on. And uh, Dad died last year, but just before he died he learned that I was going to be sort of picking up the torch and uh, carrying on with a bit of display work here next to the Lancaster. What for you have been the most interesting stories that you've chosen to display in these new displays? Oh, there's so, so many, um, because I had to go through a whole lot of research and work out what sort of things needed to be said and what needed to be left out. And one of the more powerful pieces for me was um, going to be a pie chart, and it was what would happen to a hundred servicemen on average um, in Bomber Command. And the figures are startling, and it's pretty hard to sort of see it in your head, so I thought a pie chart isn't really going to do it. And I found a, uh, an ex-RAF serviceman in England who cast me little pewter airmen. And I got a hundred airmen made, and then put together a little parade ground that they all stand and sit and lie on, depending on whether they were... Um, well enough to make it through the end of the war, or whether they became POWs, or whether they were part of the uh, 46 and 100 casualties. So uh, that that one was a pretty powerful one, but we've had many stories. We've had um, Ernest Davenport, who uh, became a prisoner of war after he um, uh, managed to survive uh, his aircraft being shot down. And he was on the eastern side of, of Germany and became one of the people who did the Thousand Mile March. Uh, a force march with their German captors um, to get away from the Russian Liberating Army because they knew that they were probably all going to die in the hands of the Russians. So um, it, during that march a lot of them died. It was uh, bitter winter. Uh, they had very little food. Uh, sometimes the POWs carried the, um, their guards' rifles for them because the, the guards were in such poor condition and they really just were all escaping for their lives. And we have um, Ernest's uh, battle dress blouse, which is the, the Air Force jacket that he wore for the three years he was a POW. And you can see the repairs that he's done with his own needle and thread kit on it to, to keep it alive. And... Uh, on the day that we were installing that in, in behind glass in the cabinet, his grandson turned up, a young boy, maybe seven years old, and he was able to hold his grandfather's um, battle dress in his hand before we put it in the cabinet. So some rather special things have happened as we've been doing this. Is there anything else you can think of uh, that's pertinent with the, the memories of Bomber Command and keeping it alive? Well... There's, there's my own little stories creeping in there because I was given a little carte blanche to put certain things in here and I was using my father's photo album to flesh out some of the stories and you'll find that there are uh, the seven photographs of the various crew members on a Lancaster in their various positions. So you've got the radio op sitting next to his radio and the pilot in the pilot seat. And you'll find that the, uh, the rear gunner is one uh, flying officer, Thomas White, which is a, a scan that I took out of his photo album. Fair enough, too. <laughs> well, thank you very much, Brett. It's a pleasure. It's been huge fun doing it and uh, fabulous people have I met and I'm just really pleased to tell 
these stories and uh, engage more people with the incredible things that these guys did for us.